Um, I'm just wondering if we could do a little bit of a round table. Everybody could kind of introduce themselves, sure. like yep. besides us. Well, who you folks are first, and then so, we'll. For sure. Yep. Um, my name is Linda Michelle. I'm a nurse. I work at the hospital. I've been a member of this community for over 40 years. Um, I started Bear Clown Patrol in Winnipeg over a year ago, and uh, that's where I met Aaron Stevens. Um, I thought it would be a great addition to our community, so um, like I said, I trained over a year over there, and then I partnered with the Power Renewal Corporation and Desiree Lambert, and uh, we're trying to bring that, bring the same concept here to our community. Aaron? Hi, my name's Aaron Stevens. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I just moved to the PAW this past fall. Love it here. Um, yeah, I've been with Bear Clan for about three years now. Um, me and the James Fable, the the founder of the second, where it originally started a long time ago, but they restarted again about four years ago. So me and James have been friends for a while. So I started up with Bear Clan. It's just been a great thing. It's a great um, community thing. So yeah, I've been I've been <clears throat> then I moved to the pond. And they've been talking about getting a Bear Clan going here. So uh, I think it's a great idea. So I've been helping out. Thank you. Desiree Lambert, uh, Executive Director of the Paw Community Renewal Corporation. Uh, Linda and I partnered on an application to the Neighborhood Renewal Fund uh, last year to apply for some funding to start up the Project Fair Clan here in the Paw. And I continually provide uh, support um, and administration and as many ways as possible to both Linda and Erin as we pursue this project. I'm Lorraine Papo. I am the street chaplain for Northern Gateway Community Chaplaincy, and I have been invited by Linda to sit on the Women's Advisory Council for Bear Clan. Great, thank you all for coming. So uh, I'll let my counselors introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Chad Zolinski, counselor for Town of the Paw. Larry Forrester, counselor for Town of the Paw, and part of the committee with the uh, Community Renewal Corporation. Bill Ward, Councillor Town of Paw. Andre Murphy, Councillor. Carrie Atkinson, hi everyone. Hi. Trevor Lane, Councillor. And I'm Herb Jakes. So please tell us about yourselves. Alrighty, so Bear Clan Patrol of Paw. What is Bear Clan Patrol? <coughs> Bear Clan Patrol is a community based solution to crime prevention. Its intention is to provide a safe sense of safety. A sense of safety, solidarity, and belonging to both its members and to the community we serve. This is achieved in a non-violent, non-threatening, non-judgmental, and supportive manner, primarily through relationship building. The patrol demonstrates a way of being that works in harmony with the broader community, rather than in conflict with it through relationship building that encourages rather than seeks to defeat. Where did we come from? Bear Clan Patrol originated in North <coughs> Winnipeg in the 1990s. It was developed due to a need for those neighborhoods to give their residents a sense of belonging and a sense of safety. The clan structure and the related responsibilities provide a balance and direction for our lives as Indigenous peoples. The patrol is organized as the Bear Clan because this clan historically has had the responsibility for peacekeeping. I know originally Aaron had mentioned that it did start out um, a while ago in Winnipeg and then with the death of Tina Fontaine it kind of had a resurge in the community primarily in the north end because the residents did not feel safe and they needed something to give them that. Oops, sorry. What is our vision? The vision of Bear Clan Patrol is to provide restoration and maintenance of harmony within the community. We'll do it by promoting safety, promoting and providing safety conflict resolution, mobile witnessing and crime prevention, maintaining a visible presence on the streets, and providing an early response to situations, as well as acting a resource uh, a resource or an advocate for community members. What's mobile witnessing? So mobile witnessing is when uh, basically when you're out on patrol and if you see a crime in progress, um, there's an opportunity to um, not act as the police, but maybe intervene uh, maybe somebody's going to break in somewhere or do something or commit an assault or there's an argument ensuing. We're just kind of there to try and intervene uh, to reduce the need of the intervention of the police. Okay. 
How does it work? Outreach is a primary objective of the Bear Clown Patrol. We achieve this by taking the initiative to directly communicate with community members while actively patrolling the streets of our community. Patrol members may offer gifts of clothing, food, juice, and water as part of this outreach effort. Discussions with the public should reinforce the Bear Clown Patrol commitment to respond to public concerns such as the recovery of hazardous items and potential searches for missing persons. Uh, did you want to speak about what we do in Winnipeg or what we have done? Okay, um, in Winnipeg we usually go around on our walks and um, the big one is picking up needles, used needles. There is a meth problem crisis in Winnipeg um, and it's slowly the sad thing is it's slowly moving up to the reserves and to the smaller towns and stuff like and um, we, we go around we pick up needles we we pick them up in schoolyards and stuff we try to we like to be out there seen by the you know by the community members and the children especially and stuff just to let them know like they live in a safe community you know we want them everybody to know it's safe you know and um, we go around we hand you know we hand out uh, school supplies to the children at you know school time and we participate in parades and and um, any anywhere they people say you know we need some volunteers you know we're a group of volunteers that are ready to go at all times we've assisted in searches for people and and um, also I do do um, like when people go missing like lately last one I think was Eduardo the Eduardo we had about 100 volunteers ready to go right, <coughs> right away. Like they just, one person called Bear Clan, we, we can get organized ourselves and get out there. And we've been trained in searching and, and forensics and stuff like that. We've, a lot of us have been trained in that. So we're able to do searches and we have the equipment and ready to go on. Also, <coughs> um, we're sort of a, in, in the North End, there's sort of a, uh, people don't like to talk to the police. You know, I, I don't want to say I, I I moved to the pod and I noticed that it's very quiet, it's a nice town and there's very good relations. But in there, there's the police and the community relations aren't that strong. But people have a easier way of talking to Bear Clan or people from Bear Clan to tell them, you know, like you know, I'm seeing a lot of activity here, so we act sometimes as a a buffer between the police and that, you know. Um, it's more easier for them to talk to or, or, you know, or people can call us and say, hey, look, I live here and here and there's, I have people leaving needles beside my, in my backyard or people are leaving needles beside my business and stuff like, and we'll be down there to, we'll come down right away and pick them up and stuff, you know, and, and we're, tr we're trying to prevent, you know, like incidents where like, in a schoolyard, some kids found a needle and, and they played doctor and one of the kids poked the other kid, you know, and this is a used needle and it's it needs, it's only a matter of time till it gets more and more serious. So we're trying to get away from that. And I don't want to try to scare, you know, like mm -hmm. I know people do the meth scare and everything and it, it creates all that. But I mean, also it's a, it's just a, a great organization. It's a great idea, you know. Volunteering, <coughs> vo volunteering, and yeah. uh, I guess yeah. And, uh, since I've joined the Bear Clan, we've done a lot of uh, saving people, and sadly, we've had to like recover bodies and stuff, and find find people and uh, find vulnerable missing youth. That's a a pretty. You know, a lot of times they'll be a uh, runaway from a foster care, and and, um, and we assist in helping find them. You know, and, and a lot of times the police are are busy. There, that you know, that why can't we just you know an extra help looking for these people? And, and and when I think the most rewarding time is when you see a family. Just I remember this one young man. He had he had drowned in the river, and and uh, and the the family was on the shore just distraught right and and they just they just wanted to find their son right and i think that was one of the when we found the son we were covered in, in the river and stuff and and just to have closure for them just to have that closure and just to know that people we were out there 24 hours on the river searching for that for that man till we found him and and then that 
that kind of just it helps because I know like I don't know, you know that feeling when you lose your cell phone right <laughs> you're just panicking you know can I can't imagine not knowing where my child is you know it's just kind of that same feeling you know and and where you just like who do I call you know you're you're calling you have police looking but like you feel like you need more help you know like that's where you can that's where the bear clan has comes in a lot where like you know hey we can, you know can can you help us find you know? Sometimes we've had people call and ask us to find their pets, and we have to like say, okay, we, we kind of have to draw a line somewhere, you know. But but you know, it's it's we do a wide a wide range of of groups of acti- you know, from you know some s- serious stuff to like, and we do some great fun stuff, you know, and we walk as a group, and for me, it's good exercise too at the same time. I mean, we have. Awesome volunteers. So, and it's, in Winnipeg, yeah, in Winnipeg, it, it. I think there's 1,100 members in Winnipeg. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, and there's different neighborhoods, and right now they're really trying to push uh, so they have more coverage. Um, the great part uh, that really attracted me was the grassroots part of it, where you're getting out on the street, and not only are you being visible to the community members, but you're, you're being there for the people that might need you. Maybe mm-hmm. you're walking past somebody who hasn't eaten all day and you're handing out a sandwich or, you know, obviously there are street workers there and maybe you're handing them out um, harm reduction supplies. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're reaching out and you're, you're making a difference. You're, you know, you're giving gloves, you're just giving them a kind word, whatever. And we know that, that there is a drug problem here in town and we know that they do have a harm reduction policy and procedure thing through the primary health. And we know that they're having over 4,000 needles out per month. Where are all those needles going? Like they're going to the end up in our park. Yeah. yeah. 4,000 needles? Yeah. yeah, one month they reported planning out over 4,000 needles. Is that every month? I'm not sure of the specifics. Like I asked for numbers, but that was reported to me on one occasion, like on one month. Um, and the Would that be an average month, do you think, or a high month? I'm not sure. I, I, I can't speak for that. But I know they are finding needles. I know they're finding needles in like the Kelsey housing estates. I know they're finding them in Devon Park, you know, along the river bank, in the OCN. But the drugs are here. Mm-hmm. And um, I've had talks with Ingrid Olson, who is the head of the RHA, and she is very supportive. And she said, you know, like anything you need, if you need sharps, containers, gloves, like we can definitely donate that to you. It's, it's, a, it's a win-win, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to be out there walking, we're going to pick up, you know, hazardous materials. Um, you know, so are you kind of operational weapons. now? Pardon me? Are you operational now here? Actually, our first patrol will be April 5th. April 5th? And we'll be operating, uh, as we move further in the presentation, we'll talk about when our patrols will be. Alrighty. So who is involved? Uh, the directors, the volunteers, the Council of Women, Community Stakeholders, and Bear Clan Patrol Inc. of Winnipeg. Why do we need it? Bear Clan is community people working with the community to provide personal security for our community in a non-threatening, non-violent, non-judgmental, and supportive way. It helps with crime prevention by providing our community with a sense of safety. Um, it's a measure of harm reduction. How? By being visible. So we're going to be visible mostly on the weekends and then we're going to tailor our patrols to to when the community feels like, when we feel like we need to. When and where do we patrol? Patrol schedules are determined by volunteer availability. (coughs) So obviously the more volunteers we have, the more area we can cover. Um, Our hours of operation right now, we've kind of set like the busy times. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 6 to 8, we're looking at possibly an afternoon patrol on the Saturday just because there's a lot of activity in town. Um, we might add a Thursday, it just depends. We're going to respond to the needs of the community. Why is that considered the busy time? There's a lot of traffic on the, on the weekend in town. Like um, if you go uptown on a Saturday afternoon, there's a lot of people in town. Um, we're just going to see like right now we're going to work with that just because a lot of people come into the community mm-hmm. and travel to town on the weekends. So if, um, I'm not sure exactly all the things you, you will or won't be dealing with, but if somebody's intoxicated, let's just say, uh, yeah. from being 
and I'm just causing an issue on the street. Would you be, is that something their plan is? Yeah, so something to, uh, in which we differ from Citizens on Patrol. I know Citizens on Patrol, they do a lot of work, but they don't engage in, in, in any um, interaction with anybody. Uh, Bear Clan functions in a way where uh, we relationship build. So, so maybe we would, we would uh, talk to them, we would see if they were safe. I know um, when we participated in the patrol and we walked with the firemen, we did encounter somebody that was on the streets that yeah, was I intoxicated. That. And we just make sure that they're safe, that you know we act as an advocate or a resource. Uh, do you need medical attention? Are you okay? And we just ensure safety. And then, of course, if the if the behavior is changing where they're becoming aggressive, then we always ensure that we're we're never alone. We would never I would never go up to somebody by myself. I would always make sure I had somebody with me, and then we would call the police if we needed to. It's, that's where that mobile witnessing would come in, right? You mentioned stakeholders. How many stakeholders do you have? Do you know, kind of sorta? Of, so right now we're we're. Community? We're trying to, um, with, like the NRHA is obviously very supportive of us. They're they're willing to give us, you know, the sharps containers and stuff. Um, the Power Renewal Corporation, we apply for the grant. Um, OCN is willing to help the patrol, you know, join us on patrol okay. anytime. Um, just uh, North whatever. of 53 has made a donation. North as well. of 53, it's just we're just kind of reaching out to people right now. We got a bunch of donation letters going out. And not necessarily for money, but maybe you want to, you know, donate some water, donate yeah. some sunscreen, like we're going to be walking in the summer, donate some gloves or, you know, anything of the sort. Thank you. We are like nonprofit. We do not have a budget. We don't. We're kind of, and we partnered with Lorraine, who has been very kind to us. We did our first aid training this weekend, and um, it's kind of like a win-win. She's allowing us to use the space as our main patrol um, start. We'll start at 155 La Rose and then branch out from there. But in turn, we hope that we can attend different community sh community functions. Maybe we attend the Canada Day Parade and do face painting. And and, and, and maybe we ask the public, hey, donate a non-perishable food item. And then we give that to the soup kitchen. Maybe we attend a blizzard game and ask for like tubes and mitts and then we hand them out to whoever we see on the street that needs them. So our drive is to help people um, in, any, in, a, in any capacity. Good question. Um, what about like for instance in front of the high rise uh, because you get a large accumulation of street people that are intoxicated and drinking while they're there and quite often it's between those hours that you pointed out up there that you're between six and eight but quite often it's during the day as well how would you deal with these people that are in these vicinities that are bothering the retired older people or the people that are going from you know trying to conduct business in the banks but they have to get past these intoxicated people that are confronting them. Yeah, so again, we're not here to act like the police. We're not here to tell people what to do. What we want to do is develop relationships. So maybe if I see Joe Schmo on the street and he's intoxicated and maybe um, asking Sally for money as she's walking into Ace or True Value or whatever, maybe I'm going to go up and talk to him and distract him. Maybe I'm going to say, how are you? Maybe I'm going to give him some respect, develop a rapport and just talk with him. I know um, getting away from this. Me and my children, we would do um, little things throughout the community just to, um, I don't know if you've ever seen, but we do the random acts of kindness and that was something as a family that we did together. So maybe we'd go and candy cane a parking lot, maybe we'd take money to the vending machine or hand out hot chocolate in the winter or something. But we would always, when we would approach people who we seen on the street, they'd be like, oh, it's you again. You know what <coughs> I mean? And it wasn't, uh, we weren't mess met with um, aggressive attitudes or anything like that. It was like a smile because and then they recognized us, uh, recognized us. So hopefully as the Bear Clan Patrol develops a relationship with, with the people on the street, maybe we can encourage that positive behavior. Maybe that will change the way they behave, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 
So, every Bear, Bear, Bear Clown Patrol volunteer will wear the high visibility drip, uh, vest. Um, on patrol, we might encounter people that are at risk. We might see drug paraphernalia such as needles, syringes, crack pipes, weapons. We might see unconscious or intoxicated individuals. And we might see crimes in progress. The mobile patrol is something that we want to add later on. Um, when available, the mobile patrol may be employed at the same time as the foot patrol. This vehicle shall involve one female and one male who will maintain radio contact with the patrol leaders. The vehicle will increase the overall patrol footprint and provide better, abil better ability to carry bulky items such as clothing, water and other items available for patrol distribution. This capability can also provide rapid response to any patrol member requirement or a potential safe ride requirement by encountered individuals. So in Winnipeg, we also did mobile control. They had the walking people, and then they had a vehicle that people would use, and then we carry, um, I know they have a lot of donations of like bread, water, muffins, day-old food from different stores or whatever, and um, besides handing them out like walking, the mobile patrol would carry all this and distribute those items to different community members as well. And in addition, it also provides a rapid response, right? Say if you find somebody who's unconscious, you know, whatever, and you just need more hands on deck to help with the situation, then there's that availability as well. Safe walks. A safe walk is a scheduled or unscheduled walk that provides an escort to a person or persons. I know in Winnipeg, um, if there was something going on like, like the fireman walk, maybe we would walk with them, like not only to show support and solidarity for our community members, but a visible presence to say, hey, you have our support. And maybe that's an FASD walk, or maybe that's a Relay for Life walk, or something. Um, oftentimes in Winnipeg, they would request that bear kind of tent just to provide that support, um, any kind of like security just to help out. Volunteer patrols will only provide safe walks or escorts if they feel that it is safe to do so. Safe walks and escorts are to be provided in teams of three or more, and teams must be mixed of mixed gender. So sometimes on patrol too, people are on the streets of Winnipeg, like the last time we walked a couple weeks ago in Winnipeg, and some lady came up to us. She didn't feel safe because she's seen a gentleman on the street. So then we might walk with her down the street if she's not feeling safe until that gentleman's out of sight, or we might watch her, you know, walk across the street to get on the bus kind of thing. Obviously, it's different in the paw, but... <coughs> communication is key. The Bear Clan Patrol employs two-way radios for inter-patrol communication and personal, personal cell phones may be used for urgent situations where privacy must be maintained. So each patrol group will have a two-way radio and will communicate with each other where we are, where our location is, and if we need any, any urgent help from like the mobile patrol or say another group. I know in Winnipeg we patrol specific areas, so we started out, you know, this street, this street, this street, we were all visible and could see each other, and then we'd say, um, you know, moving forward, or we'd uh, relay where our location was, what street we were on, just so we always had that, mm -hmm. or if we were assisting a community <coughs> member, then everybody would kind of hold and say, okay, we're assisting this community member, or Safety. As you can see, we have a big thing of safety. Uh, we have a safety waiver that will have all of our volunteers sign. Um, it talks about respect, um, using the radios in a clear, disciplined manner, always being aware of your surrounding, never attending any situation alone, um, never entering backways or alleyways without first confirming with patrol leaders, never chasing or pursuing people, maintaining integrity, and then wearing the vest to identify that you're with Bear Clan Patrol. Do you carry any liability insurance as a group? No, and that's part of the volunteer process. You sign the, the waiver. You are responsible for your own actions and you're doing so voluntarily. Um, There's a uh, bit of a movement in Manitoba to start suing volunteers. Yeah, I saw, I'm aware of that. But um, anybody that's volunteering will be. And it's the same as they do in Winnipeg, all their volunteers, they sign a waiver. Yeah, the waiver doesn't uh, 
What, what is that going to do? <coughs> All that really does is leave the volunteer on their own. Uh, yeah. if, if something happens and somebody dies on the street and the family member decides to sue, you know, the volunteer will be the one getting sued. I think we're protected under the Good Samaritan Act. <coughs> yeah, as I mentioned, there's a movement in Manitoba to start suing volunteers. Yeah. <coughs> Is it? We'll have to. I don't know. We'll have to see when this, if that ever happens. I think we did touch base on that with. <coughs> what is that we talked about? We did discuss that, with, but I can't. With all the details. I'll have to go back to my office and yeah. I know it's come up in conversation before as well. So personal conduct is very important. We want respect <coughs> within the patrol respect with all the community members that we deal with. Uh, we want to set a good example, respecting the laws, respecting values, and the dignity of all persons. And if the conduct or personal conduct of any volunteer is unbecoming, they will be asked to discontinue the patrol. Do you have a uh, home base that you work out of right now? Yeah, right now we're going to work out of 155 La Rose, which is Living Water Soup Kitchen, which is the soup kitchen that Lorraine runs like Monday to Friday. And it's a great location to start. It's right by the GM dealership. So, yeah. who should join? You, all of you. <laughs> How would this benefit me? Volunteerism is a wonderful way to give back to your community. The patrol can provide you with an opportunity to develop, to develop new skills, build on existing experience and knowledge, such as leadership, adaptability, teamwork, problem solving, communication, time management, and improved interpersonal skills. The social interaction has been improved to improve mental and physical health. It builds confidence. It gives you a chance to make a positive impact in the world you live in. You gain new perspectives by opening your minds. Help, it helps you build bridges of understanding. And you will meet people from all walks of life, develop connections, and therefore empower each other. How will this help my community? Over time, as relationships within the community are established, it is likely that feedback will provide, be provided by individuals, agencies, businesses, and other stakeholders. It is important to listen carefully in a non-judgmental manner. Take note of those providing feedback and their contact information, recommendations, and suggestions in the, to assist in our work should also be noted. Um, we are hopeful that this patrol will have a, have a positive impact on our community by increasing the safety level for our residents. Any questions? I know they're volunteers, but is there a, like child registry checks done or criminal record checks on the volunteers that are volunteering for the Bear Clan Patrol that are going into the schoolyards and talking with these children and going to different functions? Uh, we're actually not going into any schoolyards. And part of the patrol okay. um, application is we do ask if they are willing to um, get a criminal record check in future if needed. Um, the only time they would need that kind of check is if uh, we move forward to youth patrols, which is something we've also entertained before uh, or since. Um, we thought about having youth mock patrols, just getting the youth involved. And in those circumstances, we would definitely be requiring those checks. But right now, <coughs> if you're actively patrolling as a volunteer, you are never alone with anybody. You are in a group, and we emphasize that strongly. Um, there may be some people that do have a criminal background. We're not holding it against anybody. You're volunteering, you're walking, you're giving back to your community. If you behave in a way where your behavior is not great, then we may ask you to stop patrolling with us. So you've had, what, one or two registration <coughs> nights in the park? We've had a few registration nights. We've been out to Blizzard Games, um, Kiki Rock, just different areas trying to get the word out there. We've given interviews on the radio for Thompson, Winnipeg, here. And how many people have you have stepped forward in town here? Right now we have about 30 people that are signed up to volunteer. Um, we're really emphasizing the fact that because you want to step forward as a volunteer, it doesn't mean you have to commit to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week. If you can give me a Friday once a month, if you can give me your Saturdays twice a month, that is fantastic. The schedule is up to the volunteer. 
I mean, Winnipeg, we usually have about 30 people per night, but it's usually one night will be like, a, say, the investors group wants to help out, so they'll come out for one night, and there'll be like 60 people one night, or there'll be a usual, there, there's a usual like 20 volunteers that are there normally, and it's uh, now it's runs Wednesday to Sunday, so it's those five or five days that that there's always a large group now because and then the next day say some staff from Walmart you know like 20 of them got together and, hey we want to go out one night or so people are having a competition at this other insurance company and they have these Fitbits and they needed to fill their Fitbits for to win their competition right for steps taken and they went out there and they and they won right because they came out every night for a week you know and, and walked the steps but I mean it's 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 it, every day it changes, you know. It's it's different volunteers, but I mean, there's a, a group of us n normal like that are always there. The regular core, the, yeah. the core, the, yeah, the core group, and, and and a lot of the thing I like about it too is is I know in the past like situations come up where you know maybe there's a missing hunter or something, and 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 you'll hear about it in the news, and and you'll be like you know I want to help, but it's for me personally, it's like oh you know someone else will do it, or you know. Uh, but, well, you know, I, I'm really sh shy, to, you know, I don't want to go by myself and, and you know, go and do it. But it, if you're in a, a group, you're like, hey, you know, are, are you going, Linda, Lorraine, are you going, or Desiree, are you going? Yeah, okay, let's all go, you know. That's kind of how it works, too, you know. Suddenly we'll have everybody, like, that are comfortable with each other, like, let's all go there at once. You know? And then there you've got 30 volunteers, you know. And that's also how Bear Clans works, too. <coughs> so, I mean, it's... It, it it varies, but yeah, that's usually how our uh, how the nights go. And so nights. we have been invited to UCN too to present to them. Uh, we're hoping, like moving forward, we can get involved in different <coughs> programs in town. Maybe it becomes a part of your community rotation as a nursing student. You come out and you volunteer. You put some volunteer hours in. Um, maybe it's a part of the fine option program where you come out and volunteer. We're really thinking big and mm -hmm. trying to get as much people out volunteering. I think it's it's better for our community, it's healthier, it's we have more productive citizens, people are happier and people feel generally feel good about themselves when they're doing something and giving back. Great. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you well. Thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Uh, one point two, Staff Sergeant Brent Lemieux, breakdown of information. Um, Everybody look at it? Yeah. 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 What are we going to do by time? Can I yeah? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Brett was supposed to be here. not sure why he wasn't. Um, I did have a meeting last week when we were in Winnipeg with um, Public Safety Canada. They don't have a whole lot of monies, and I did explain some of the issues we were having with this. I think with the information we have here, I suggest we go to the province with these stats and see if they'll fund another officer through the province and not through oh, the provincial. provincial. <laughs> because in all reality, there was almost $70,000 of mental health and CFS. And if you look at the intoxicated public place and disturbing the peace, 664 of 738 people were transient or homeless. So why, are we so why are we paying for this? I think we need to go to the province on this. And even if it helps with getting them to come to us, to the other communities, whether it's going through Swampy Cree and saying, these are people that we know are from your designated areas, we want some funding to pay for this. I think that's a good idea. Because yeah. We can get another yeah. provincial police officer. That's kind of, really? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Don't let it go to your head. <laughs> Okay, we'll get on that. <laughs> okay, everybody's good with that idea? Okay, well, oh, well. After I did all these stats, it was so easy. Yeah, I for know, sure. for sure. <laughs> yeah. no. MKO? MKO yeah. was part of it, but Swampy Cree is covering specific to the areas we're talking about. Okay. Because there's seven First Nations communities under Swampy Cree. Yeah. Okay. So even to get a meeting with them and kind of let them know what's going on. Okay. Uh, landfill dump fees. Okay, so I asked for this to be put on the agenda because I've talked to a few people in the community who uh, have buildings that may need some attention and they've, they've indicated one of the reasons that they haven't demolished their fire damaged properties is because of the dump fees. 
So I wonder if we can throw this on the table as a, as maybe put together a working group or a committee or something to, to have a look at this. Because if, if dump fees are the reason that, say, I think there's three or four homes on Taylor now that need to be demolished, yeah. right? And the neighbors are complaining, you know, why aren't these homes being destroyed? Uh, then the, I think it's something we need to look at. Wouldn't an insurance policy go to you do that? Yeah. Yeah. It all depends on... What's if you have insurance, oh, yeah, 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 insurance, insurance yeah. what's included on the policy? Right? Yeah, you said five percent. Yeah, I spoke to Cook and Cook and Insurance, and they advised that normally the breeze removal is factored into a house insurance at five percent of their limit. Yes, it's also what of the five percent of their limit. limit. Right. So, in so say for instance, so I'll tell you a true story. Um, we have no, the, don't tell me a true story. I'll lie to you. We recently reviewed our insurance premium and program for our hotel after the Gateway Hotel fire. Right. That's when you check. And one of the things we discussed was, uh, in the event that the hotel burnt to the ground, um, what would it pay for dump fees? $5,000. Oh, really? And we calculated what it was going to be, and it was going to be somewhere around a hundred grand in dump fees based on the town's fee schedule. Mm -hmm. It was mind-blowing. Wow. And um, I don't think people in general realize how much our dump fees are when a building is destroyed, and I don't think they have enough insurance. <coughs> so when Mary Duncan burnt down there, did they pay? Who didn't fees have dump fees on? Your average um, one of the commercial buildings that was in town cost probably twenty, twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five. That one on the possibly. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it's it's not cheap. And, and it's out, and we're out of whack with other communities. No, nope. not really. No, no we're not. Say when I looked at that. Yeah. No, it seemed the same. I, I get it, right? So uh, we have to find a way to address the problem, mm -hmm. right? To come up with a solution. I'm not sure what the solution is, truthfully. But if if neighbors are complaining that they have these unsightly buildings on their streets, yeah. and the people who own them are saying they can't afford the dump fees, there's got to be a middle ground there somewhere of how we can do. But I'm not sure what it is. But then, if they build within 24 months, you get uh, half of the feedback. You get half of the feedback. Yeah. yeah. And I'd re recommend it if you don't build within 24 months, maybe we could look at giving them 25% back for cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't or know what the yeah. answer. Or is. if you're rebuilding, give it a little higher. So. Yeah. Or do you want to do a one-time only thing of okay, you got two months as a community mm -hmm. pride cleanup thing. Yeah. You got two months to get everything down, free dump fees for that's a good big idea. buildings. Yeah. And Just get it, it done. After that, you go back to... 20, if you get it done in 2019, that's it. There's no dump fees for... Uh, uh, I think you come up with a, a ceiling price for it's... You know, whatever. It has to be a max. Like just, just come up with a max. I mean, obviously, barring if it's, you know, a massive, massive yes. structure, then... But I mean, for a regular residential house, no more than I don't know, come up with a fee, fifteen hundred bucks, two thousand bucks. Yeah. And then that way, then you don't have the guy, poor guy, who burned down the yeah. month after. Yeah. So, you, we, so would you go to something like a dollar per square foot? That's what you said to a community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, like so two thousand square foot home would cost you two. When we were at, yeah. I'm going to change gears a bit. When we were at AMM, um, <clears throat> there was some some interesting discussion. And one of them had to do with groupthink and uh, the uh, token no guy, uh, devil's advocate. Yeah. And you know, an issue like this might be a good time to to try something like that. You know, uh, rather rather than just come up with a very quick decision tonight, you know, we should research it a bit, and we should have a couple people who say no, leave it as is, and a couple people who say no, let's change it, right? And then come back to a committee meeting in two or four weeks, and and let's. Let's make a decision, an informed decision, rather than just you know, fifteen hundred bucks or a thousand yeah. or free or whatever. Because you need to get involved in it. Yeah, because we've talked to engineering, get some history. You know, what are these things costing now? What are other communities doing? What do we want to do with our community? You know, because there's nothing saying we have to be like Swan River. We can be. Right. We can be us. All right. So I, I would propose that we break into a couple of groups and, sure. and come back in a couple of weeks or four weeks, whatever we need. Sure. All right, so who wants to go on the yay side? Trevor? Trevor. And Trevor and Larry. And the no side is Chad and Bill? 
Uh, sure. Yeah. There you go. Bring us your reports. We're no. We're no way. You're no. Pretty easy. No. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Do you want me to have it back to the agenda? Later. Four weeks. Say it for me. Okay. Carrie. So is, yeah, I, it's kind of turning a little bit here. So every piece of debris that comes from a house that's burnt is all part of a dump feed, or yes. is there certain portions no. of that that is every gone? piece? There's if it's sorted out, there could be. Yeah, if it's yeah. sorted, the cement. If you sort it, yeah. does it make a difference? That's yeah, what it does. Because yeah. it can go in your yeah. burning pile. Okay. Yeah. And if you took yeah. all the that nails was, out of the wood, it would be, that wood would be free? That's true, though. It yeah, is. It's true. true if you sat there and pulled all the nails. Like. That was my only question. Okay. Thanks. So we'll come back in four weeks. Sounds good. Great. Uh, community wellness challenge. Um, this was a presentation we had last time when uh, the information was found. We're already in sponsoring in kind. 4,370,000, 4, which makes us a partner at 3,500 plus. Does council want to do more or do they believe that that's plenty? I think that's plenty. I think it's plenty. I think it's plenty. Don't need an outside of that one. Okay. <laughs> so I'm straight to committee. There you go. Uh, okay, the electrician, town employed electrician. As you recall, during the board. Is your board. Did I miss one? You jumped two, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. I'm just trying to get this meeting. There you go. Museum board. So we have a request from the museum board to appoint Brian Rock to the board. So we would require a resolution. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. Does that fill you guys up? Or? Uh, one more. I mean, one there's more. that. He's a tea tide. I'm going to get the name wrong. There's one more spot that he might be interested in. But yeah, so one more left. Good. Uh, okay, 4.3. Again, I asked this to be brought up. Uh, parking on Bignell Avenue around the Twin Motors property. Um, I've received complaints from some of the residents in the area about uh, the parking situation. Uh, I don't know if anybody's had a look at I might not go that. I don't really go that way. Did you guys go yeah. look? I can show you pictures. Yeah, good times and then Twin Motors. Like, yeah. no, this is the back of the big There's buildings, okay. temporary buildings that are located actually on our property. Really? There's buildings now too. Well, there's an Atco trailer. Sorry, I'll jump hey, in on this yeah. too. This has been a continual fight for for many, many, many years actually. Um, if you look at the hydro line, I also like received a call and we looked at the measurements and there's also a temporary aqua building that would be on the right of way being our property. Yeah. Uh, I have been nicely trying to deal with the situation and they move it and the owner did speak to me and says, well, I can't control them. They park back there all the time as much as I tell them. So I had sent a email. Um, it's on the front of there. I think it was, sorry, Trevor. I just, for one second. On March 11th, I sent an email advising of the vehicles and temporary building being on the town property and requested a plan of action within 10 calendar days. And I was supposed to get a plan. I've received nothing to date. Well, they moved that trailer, though, right? Yeah. I haven't been back there today. There was one literally that was behind the garage. That's our property. So, A, we either enforce those bylaws. Or B, we put a no parking in there as my, and just automatically have someone tow. Because this is, yeah. this What's is creating a problem. It's a uh, construction trailer. It was oh, across the road. It's road. a mobile office. Yeah. For them? For them? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And in saying that, I also did contact, um, we talked to, why well, can't, the commissioner's office um, when we were at AMM, and I sent them all our bylaws and stuff, and they're going to be getting back to us on providing that service. Really? Some costs and, yeah. and what plan they would do for providing that service to us. So there's a couple things here. There's look at the commissioners enforcing our bylaws and considering having no parking in that area. Is it a no parking area already? No. It's just loosey-goosey all over. So what bylaw would you be reinforcing if we, if you are? We would put no parking on our road. No, I know, but if there's people traffic. parking there yeah. now. Oh, sorry, yes, traffic bylaw would be amended to include no parking in that yeah, area. Yeah, but today, 
Yeah. There's a lot of parking. No, no. We no. have a parking bylaw in place that's been there since like 1974 or something. It's quite old, and it, it talks to, about parking on town property and how you have to move every 24 hours or two hours or something. So there's a bylaw in place for this. So those look like all personal vehicles that wouldn't be there all the time. That's not entirely. Some of them are always no. there. Yeah, there's a lot of the the. Uh, there's a lot of the, the dealership vehicles there too. Yeah, a lot of vehicles. No, I've never been back there. I'm just trying. I've seen that picture there, and I know what we're talking. But I just, I, you know, there's that one row on the south side that would be backed up to the on their lot. But right, back those up. are his resale vehicles. Yeah, yeah. But it, there's uh, so if you vision the street, the hydro poles are the town property line, yeah. and so uh, they use it consistently and regularly for their vehicles, customer vehicles, loading vehicles, all that kind of stuff. Right? I believe it's two feet from the actual building itself is, is where the property your, is. Your property oh, is well, approximately oh, 2.6 oh, really? feet from yeah, the existing six. dealership building. Yeah, if they're As you can see from the additional pictures, vehicles are parked completely on town property. It would also be appear that temporary building is also located on a public town property. And um, mm -hmm. vehicles that would be parked parallel to the street would mean no closer than 15.5 feet. So it's definitely infringing on the town street. The, the town street. If it's there longer than 24 hours. Half of the yeah. time you can get maybe one vehicle through, which is not the way you park on a street. It's a street, and I think that's what's confusing people. It's, it's a street, yeah. but it re appears as a back lane. Yeah, it is, it is big, um, yeah. uh, arguably we don't take very good care of it, right? it's pretty rough most of the time, <laughs> uh, but it is a street. Uh, my suggestion would be to invite Mr. Hocus or one of his representatives to a meeting with council uh -huh. and, and maybe discuss the situation with us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, we should find out, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. And then if there's no show, then, then we can proceed. Uh, yeah. yeah. And either way, in the interim, we're still getting commissioner's office to yep. provide us with just some quotes and a plan, and then we'll review that when it comes in. And do okay. they do services in any communities? Yeah. 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 They do for quite a few communities. Yeah. They haven't been up here yet, so we're kind of excited. Yeah. 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 Okay, guys, so we'll move on to the next one. I guess now we'll talk about the electrician. So when looking at the, um, the direction was to look at the last couple of years as to what we spend in electrical, like in electrician's fees. So 2017 and 18, the cost was 125,339.65. However, 40,688 was basically not part of our hydro incentive. So the so labor component was 25,7 roughly? Yeah. And the other problem is you probably have more than one person working at this time, so typically they can't work alone. So your labor cost is probably not really accurate just on hours. It could be two, a two-man job for some of this work. Yeah. yeah, it would have been just the way it was built us. So yeah, 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 no, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I don't think it's worth it to have an electrician and stuff. Is there work not getting done because we don't have one? Um, delayed, yes. I can say delayed because there's times where we need something changed and we have to wait it out for the guy. I know out at the airport, we end up getting a guy in from Flin Flon just because he knows a little more about uh, the runway lights and stuff like that. So... Yeah. <coughs> but realistically, that yeah. really wouldn't change much because unless your electrician that you hired has all those capabilities, mm -hmm. you're still getting somebody from So the, the few there. retired electricians we have around, you tell me we wait for them? Sometimes we do, yes. Yeah. Tre certain work they'll do. Trevor, certain work they yeah, won't. because he's a full-time he, business all yeah. the time. And, but I know there's some smaller guys around that could change lights and motors. There's and two smaller guys that we do utilize as much as we can. But uh, don't we have some requirements for workers' comp mm -hmm. and working alone procedures yeah. and insurance? And I'm not sure those guys have it. I think one guy I know for sure has, a co has his own company. Does he? Yeah. 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 I know two that do. So we, Bill has had the idea many times. He's talked about the standing offer yeah. situation, right? It would seem to me electrical services would fit right in with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
No, you're absolutely right. And then that's why I said I'm surprised that you would have to wait. You know, for, I mean, I get it. If there's a light burnt out, you're going to call the guy. He's not going to come today, but he should be there in a couple of days. Sir? One hour. But a light burnt out, you shouldn't be using an electrician. No. Well, well I'll call the on the bridge. Charles is different. So, could, would it be reasonable to ask staff to come back with a list of electricians that we've had the standing mm -hmm. offer discussion with? Yep. Yep. Present us with that list? Well, we shouldn't we even ask, go one step further and make contact with those electricians to say, what would your rates be if we need uh, I would them? assume that's all part that's, of that. That's all part of the yeah. parcel. Yeah. yeah, I would assume. And to make and sure if, they, have there, they have to show uh, their WCB and their uh, whatever it is. There is two guys, though, that we do have local to do the smaller jobs. Because they'll, they'll need to provide us with their safety program, right? And provide us with their insurance documents, all that kind of stuff. CDC compiled a list. Was that just of contractors, or was that of mm -hmm. electrician contractors? Contractors. contractors. contractors? Yeah. Okay. This wouldn't be hard to figure There's out because Aldrin there. would have all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. So you'll get back to us in a yeah. month or so? Uh, Gateway, Kiwit, and Corridor, invitation to the AGM. The Is that the one in PA? That's the one in Nippon, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nippon, I yeah. should say. Yeah. Um, somebody want to go to that? I know I can't. Anybody, anybody interested in reading about it? Bill, yes. <laughs> Bill, would you like to go to that AGM? Uh, okay, I will. Okay, payroll and okay. accounts, disbursement reports. So we have pay period six, we would require resolution in the amount of 108, 415, 10, general for 188, 499, 76, and EFTs for 257, 707, 62. We would also need in the resolution for disbursements for Northern Building Supply um, for Mr. Ward and for Mr. Forrester. <coughs> Some of these were STITCO was 50000 that was Airport Arena and well, or Water Treatment Plant and Civic Center for heating. Library was their 2019 advance in the amount of $40,000. Morgan Fuels, $14,000 airport fuel. And I don't know how to say it, it's X. Xylem is for some workers to the lift station. Does it help when I point those out? or mm -hmm. yeah. Just yeah. some of the bigger ones is all I'm saying. So we would require two resolutions. On the uh, Graham provide, uh, maybe I haven't noticed it before, but he provided us with this other report and it shows the supplier name mm -hmm. and then this one? the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. report one there. Yeah. Could he give us the, because he's got the GL account numbers there, so on the Stitco ones, um, could he provide us with the report for each of the <coughs> account numbers, the GL numbers? So a report for what the facilities, each facility? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm going to get to Stitco here. So you want to further break down the Yeah, so Stitco, for instance, like he's got account number 231599. So for each building. For each one. If he could give us the breakdown of each of those GL account numbers. Sure. And I'm assuming it's probably a fairly easy port to print. Yeah. yeah. Right. Do you want us to email that or bring it back to the next meeting? Could you email it to us all? And yeah, we can have a look at it because I'm really interested in it. In the heating, for sure. be your water treatment plant yeah. in this building. That's be the wellness center. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> There's airports too. Yeah. Cool. If you could do that, that yeah. would be very much appreciated. Uh, Northern Urban Reserves uh, Economic Development Forum, uh, that's in Thompson, April 9th and 10th. I think, Bill, when, when's the Gateway one? It's the 9th, isn't it? Eight, 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 the day before. Yeah. Again, I, I can't go to this one for two days in Thompson. Um, I just can't do it. If, if somebody else would like to go. Ideally, uh, it would have been good for if we could get someone to go, at least one person, just to report back on this. Um, I can mark it down tentatively. I just might get a pro I have a, a potential work conflict that I can see if I can get out of. I would have gone to this, but that means I would miss half a day on the Tuesday because I need to be in Winnipeg the following day. I received an invitation um, outside of Town of the Paw, and I'm still 
undecided as to. Yeah, so Carrie, if you can go, then I don't I, think the both of us need to be there. So we, I'm still <laughs> undecided. I'll do a resolution for one for one. I was 39. Yeah, but Carrie's here now. Just ask for information. She's going. She's committed. Yeah. Don't worry about that work for me. Yeah, I, I wait 10 more, then crank it right at 39. 39. Straight. Straight to <laughs> Straight down. One. Okay, so there'll be a resolution coming for forward, and, and we'll see who can go, but I'm, I'm sorry, I know I can't. Uh, Bylaw Enforcement Seminar follow-up. Oh, sorry, I guess I answered this in the other one. Yeah. Yeah. So we sent the information out, we'll wait for it to come back. Great. No, what was the other thing was about changing stuff from the provincial from the oh yes the MBLA to the POA. But then you said there was conflicting information yes. in AMM. So I sent it both to them. I sent everything to them, them and said all. you give us some advice. Okay, good enough. It was a good seminar though. The one that the two of us, the three of us went to. I thought it was. We actually I had a very remember. good conversation even when we went there, like yeah. just before we were leaving. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get something back very quick. Uh, water to taxes, that's basic housekeeping. Yep. Resolution that, that as of that date, whoever's got outstanding utilities yep. will be added to taxes. Uh, the Honorable Janice Philman is coming to the call in the fall. Uh, we have some time to plan for that, uh, but we'll, we'll treat her well. Are we going to look at this, or do you want the CDC to look at this? No, we'll do it. Okay. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Yeah. It'll be similar to when the federal minister was in town. Something, well, I, I can't, I'm, I'm jumping around here just a second, but something that I think of it in the old days, we used to have a budget line for visiting dignitaries, for receptions and luncheons and that. I don't think we do anymore, do we? They haven't for the last couple, and I think that's very important. Yeah, we need to. There's a need... mayor's hospitality line. Is there? Not a... much of one, though. How much? It was 10. Was it that much? Because I think it was like they dropped that. So can we check into that? Because when we get these dignitaries in town, it's not unreasonable to put on a bit of a luncheon or something, right? Get make some sandwiches or I don't want that. <laughs> get a made at Larry's there? Yeah, there you go. $70 bottle of wine, shoot a couple of games, and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, okay, we need to tour the airport, guys and gals. This Saturday, Saturday the sixth or Saturday the thirteenth. Who can who can go this weekend? The thirteenth is better for me. Thirteenth works for me. Thirteenth? Yeah. When's Easter? That's when we That's follow the weekend. Um, like the twenty first, somewhere around there. So, so Saturday the thirteenth. Saturday, Saturday the thirteenth. What's that? Nine. So is, is the no time lifted at the airport? Randy? Sorry, what? Is the no time lifted at the airport? Nope, not for the fuel. Um, we just nine a.m. Yes, yeah. We just got notification on that. Uh, we had they put out three quick uh, bids for that. One came in at twenty-one thousand for the cleanup and the replacement of everything, and one came in at seven thousand. That does the exact same job. So, <laughs> so what, we're obviously going to move forward with the seven thousand dollar. What was the problem? There was something with the filter, it was disintegrating the filter and pieces were going into the fuel. So How when they did the happened? testing, I'm sorry? How come that happened? I can't quite remember how they explained it, but it was something that, it was a treatment in the fuel that we didn't have before. No, I, I read that. Detergent or no, I read that, but how, did we, how do we put the wrong filter in a aviation fuel system it was my understanding it was the correct filter it was the fuel that changed and no yeah. one did anything okay so how do we then what do we go back to the people that supply us a different fuel to say you contaminated all this fuel like well you would you would think that the airport <coughs> management company would have caught this yeah right that to me wouldn't have been unreasonable you would think there would have been a discussion between the fuel supplier and the airport manager saying we've changed something and you need to change something yeah it seems like that discussion was never held. Well, I think it still needs to be held because you've got a pretty big expense that you've got to learn from it so that... Well, I think that consultant that we hired is having that discussion. Okay. And I think it was the consultant we hired that discovered it. Yep. We had an opportunity to sell the fuel the way it is, and uh, they said that it would cost almost ten grand to get the test there in the first place, so it's not worth it. 
but we do have, um, I think you said Randy had said they could use it for some of the practices Possibly and stuff. Have to look into it. Yeah, but if you if have no use good. for it anywhere else because everybody's scared to take it, it's better than nothing. So what's the outcome of that then? What, like, what do we learn from that? Purge the tank and make sure that we know what we're no, getting. What do we learn from the issue, the root, the the issue of this happening to us? Like, how do we make sure it doesn't happen again? We we clearly need to have a meeting with the airport manager. Yeah. Right. And I'm hopeful on that Saturday we can have some of these discussions, because I'm under the impression that that's what we're paying for, is for them to manage, manage the, airport. the airport. Right. Right. And um, we're sort of hands off. You know, and it, it's, I don't think it's unreasonable for Wasco, is that the yeah. Wasco? Wasco, yeah. I don't think it's unreasonable for Wasco to have had that discussion with the fuel supplier and then notify the town that you guys need to change something. Mm -hmm. I'll have him prepared for, for you guys asking that question when you meet with him. When I did ask the question, he said that's why we're going through the testing to make sure everybody knows what they're testing for. And, and who, who did the issue sheet up for the tour, like to take a tour of the airport? Who was I'm not sure if that Shana, would have been. It was Shauna that did it. Rowan. Rowan, sorry, Rowan. Okay. And she's the consultant. Like she's the out of Winnipeg, or she's. She's the here. The main guy is the manager out of Winnipeg, but they have someone here. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask the same question. Yeah, that doesn't. Yeah. Whether we would pay for a guy to come up just to have a meeting with us on a Saturday morning. See, generally what has happened in the past is when we did sign this contract, it was them coming from Winnipeg regularly. Like it was what twice a month. Yeah. So now they have someone that's actually sitting here on site all the time, and he travels back very seldom now. So why don't we just not have to pay for a guy to come all the way up here, and just for us to just meet with the guys that are there, if he's their their main guy? You're more than welcome to meet with Rowan, and that's what I'd suggested in the first place. But he wanted to meet with you guys to talk to you about just the general contract and everything. Well, should but I can he tell pay them his that. own wage way, way up then, or as part of their sales I can tell airport management? I can tell them that. I just say either that or coordinate yeah. it when he's on site. Mm -hmm. For sure. We don't, we don't want to pay for a special trip just yeah, for him to come. My other reason for asking was almost like there's there's a looming thing he's going to ask us or something. <laughs> like he's, he's requesting, there's this, this bunch of things are going I think he feels a little week. out of place that most everybody had theirs done and. He didn't get the opportunity to show bears and but, the but, operations. But then I, but then we go back to the I don't want to beat this to death. But it's like this is I mean the budget's a big thing for sure. But I mean in this big scheme of things is small. But but he didn't tell us anything of the gas. I got I got I, I don't know. It just kind of seems like no, is, he, where you're is, from. is he? I don't know. That's that's why I because I thought you did it up just because you know we haven't yeah. been out there yet. Just let's get this one done and over. That's where I thought it came from. So. Okay. So we'll go back right. and say we want right. someone com to come prepared with an answer about the fuel, and also we're not wanting to pay specially for someone to come down on a Saturday. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and we may have a general discussion with him about the management of the airport, the services they provide, yeah. and, and just to see if it's meeting our expectations or our needs. You would do that with him, though, versus yeah. Rowan, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I guess we got a couple things for in camera. That's it. Yeah, so I'm gonna ask a couple of things. Uh, yeah. The financial. So maybe I'm, I'm behind a month. But do we get the financial report for like when do we get the next financial report on like January, February? He hasn't closed. I think he just closed off your end. He just closed off. Yeah. He's just finishing. Yeah. Year. So we probably within the He's next been working on budget month. So we'll always be, we'll be like three or four months behind on... Usually report. a month or two you can be, but usually we get about March, May, just because of the close off of your end. Is that kind of difficult for us to decide how to make decisions on finances though, if we don't have like where we're at year to date sort of thing? And I, I don't know, I'm just asking a question. I'd expect that a few weeks after a month end that we should see something. Is like, can he provide like a summary or... I think the, the biggest issue that Graham is running into, and I'm not making excuses for him, I'm just saying that the the reasons I've heard is are limitations within our current accounting program. Yeah. You know, um, so 
I agree that having timely financial information is extremely important in financial decisions. So, you know, I think as soon as we get through budget, I think that should be his priority for sure. Number one priority is getting those financial statements put in order so that he can whip them off through the program. Whether he has to go back to the company, whether there has to be more help hired, whatever has to happen, but yeah, we need to get timely information. And I can speak to him just see even if we can get a general summary. <coughs> well, I mean, by department anyways, whether what they've spent and where they're at, just overall, maybe not all the details, but as a high level yeah. spend, and does it look like it's on track or not? For sure. And, and I know I'm going to sound like a bit of a whiner on this one, and I would have bent over and picked it up myself, but who's responsible for the garbage around the water treatment plant? We had this conversation this morning. We had the guys cutting ice. That's why they didn't pick it up. We had the guy that called in sick, and they were taking out the ice. But the water treatment plant guys can't they pick up those bottles and garbage that are there. Like, we talk about pride, and then you come into the department, and it's like, it's... Probably your kind of place. Back mm -hmm. there. And like I said, I would have picked it up myself, but there's a lot of garbage up there. Yeah, there is. There was lots of by the fish activity. It was all over the place. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for us, the guy coming into work, working in a water treatment plant, you must do a tour around the building, grab a garbage bag or a can. And if not, he should do a tour around the building. I know most of us were away last week, Randy, but did Randy manage and Sam talk about that room in the fire department? They, they were supposed to meet, and because Chris was away, they didn't meet. But I know that is ongoing, that, that's their plan moving forward. <coughs> Unless they met Friday, but I don't know. I think Randy ended up going. Yeah, and Randy's away this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Um, new business for next meeting? Have you guys got anything just yet? There's some things I'd like to, if we could get some updates on. Um, all the outstanding consulting reports, you can find a little bit out with all of them. Because there's, there's a few, right? Yeah, so there's a way to go. Way to go there's the, the right. Yeah, so, yeah. so for the next one. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We should, I think it was Andre had mentioned, somebody had mentioned about the committees that we're on right now whether they're relevant or so relevant. Yeah, that's... So we should talk about that, right? Well, I mean, there's some that I've been on, like, for me, and I mentioned it to her, I mean, I'm on committees that never, ever met, and we ask every month, uh, you know, yeah. or every two weeks, uh, coalition. I'm not, I'm not even sure. Yeah. And so is yeah. There, are they active, and if they're not, like, I'd like to help out other else for if that's That's right. you need some help. Of. Larry's meeting four <laughs> times a week, and... You know, Trevor is busy as hell. Maybe should that's a good discussion. And even that came up with the consulting guy there, saying that they removed uh, counsel from all all committees, all ex uh, external committees, because of various reasons. Okay, so, so if we can, so we need to do that. Discussion. Yeah. 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 Discussion. Um, can we get an update on the Kelsey Planning District? Yeah. Where it's at, the whole thing. And could you ask him if, because he's redoing the zoning bylaws, right? Does he have the condo bylaw in there? Because we don't have a condo bylaw in our community. I think that was part of what we requested. Was that and condos the and granny suites? Yeah, yeah. The small places, like, yeah. So if he's got that, if he could send that to us, that would be wonderful. And the other question I had about had to do with policies. Um, is there somewhere on our website that shows all our yeah. policies? It's on your Netflix. Is it on, Netflix? All Netflix? It's on your own Netflix? Netflix? Yeah, I'm on Netflix. Netflix. It's entertaining. <laughs> do, do we have over 900 policies? No. It's, some no, of them were deleted already or revised. But no, there was no one, there was no two. Yeah. It all started at 100. Oh, okay. All right. Because yes. when we passed it's, that one um, tonight, it was like 917. Yeah, it's or in. Can I just see this? Just, can I? Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of policies. If you go into um, your minutes and then you go into documents, <coughs> and then you hit policies, and then you go into each one of those. Where did There's you find all that? your policies. You go up at the documents. Yeah. Menu plus. Documents. And then if you go down here, it's policies. And then finance admin. There's all your finance and admin policies. Under there, yeah. And then you can access them.
There's still a lot of them now. Yeah, yeah there's lots of policies. Oh. Some of That's them just are your redundant. Demand, and if you go out of there, you'll see your... Do we follow these, or are they just there? No, we follow a majority of them. I reviewed them last year, the year before. The year before. And we got rid of a bunch that we weren't following. We amended some that we were sort of following, but not... So we made it worded to the way we were doing the practice. Okay. I'll look at these. I didn't know that was yeah, there. Yeah, they're all there. Yeah. Yeah. You asked. <laughs> okay, anybody else got anything else for the next meeting? Do you still want policies on the agenda? Um, no. Well, I'll look through here and then get back to you. I didn't know this was here. Resolution deadline. When is that again? For AMM? Yes. June 1st. Yeah, it is late, eh? I'm pretty sure it was June 1st, resolutions have to be in. Are we wanting to maybe uh, yeah, put something yeah, towards the province on fire? Fire, yeah, yes. Yeah. We want to move forward. We, we'd like to have a discussion to move forward with the firefighter protection, similar to yeah. Saskatchewan that yeah. Bill had said. And if we can get that to June districts, then... I think they're expecting that out of us, period. Good. Um, I know Brent was supposed to be here today. Um, are we going to try and re-invite him back for the next meeting? Yes. Okay. Who? Right, right. Staff oh, Sergeant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that on there. And didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got a couple things for in camera. <clears throat> oh yeah, sorry, I'm reading policies here. I'm sorry? I was reading policies. Oh. I found something new there. So I could be on the committee? Eh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.